The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman about to sneeze about. Uh, excuse me. Wow. How about that? Right as I'm about to start the show. Friday. Last, last day of the month was yesterday. First day of the month is today. Thank you for the bless you. And we are looking at. Right at this moment, it's such a fascinating market because we're looking at the U-shaped pattern being stronger than I expected from yesterday's candle in the ESU. This is the September contract of the E-mini S&P 500 future. And we're looking at it up 7.50 at 2477.50. Now, it's gone above the 2474 round number high that was made back in the middle of August. The all-time high was 2488.50. Most, most important is that you've got a very precise, and now, you know, I'm going to go through a couple of things. Uh, we were short a small position of the Dow, and we got stopped out yesterday because I had a really tight 1.1% uh, stop loss. We just weren't prepared to, I, I, I didn't want to, I, there was no reason whatsoever to be more, um, extravagant than that well and i'll explain why i'll do it as I'm, I'm putting in the right side price time match so that's to today and it hasn't made it so this is going to be very interesting make that great. yeah let me explain within the context of the markets i discussed for quite some time that the semiconductors the smh it basically led the the nasdaq ndx 100 up and it went all the way. Let me show you. I'll do it in real time. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start fresh. The, the E-mini is up 6.75. The Dow is up 55 at 22,004. I'd say to subscribers and to other people when I spoke the other night, above 22,020 on a closing basis, I have to respect that. Above 20,050, 22,050, there's just a real good chance that the Dow will test its all-time high. I'm thinking of something, and I'll talk about it as we go through this, but I do want to give the numbers. The S&P is up six. Now we're in align alignment before the Dow was way weaker than the S&P, at least for a few days. So now we're in alignment. The S&P 500 is up 0.25. The Dow is up 0.26. That's, that's, that's better. So the S&P is at 2477. The comp index is up seven at 60. What is that? 6436. The VIX is down at 10.08 uh, down in these low levels this is not just buying pressure but it's support and that's really the emphasis I've given that with the VIX index under under 13 under the teens it's kind of both support and buying pressure but if you don't get the buying buying pressure it is also support only when the vic starts going into the teens where we start to see the sell off unfold and i think we're getting close to something like that and i'll explain the whole thing as we go through this i also want you to just do this and we can can, can come back to the e mini in a moment but i just want to say the tlt another big clue is down 79 cents at 127.20 made a peak g slash c in the daily the the Monthly, I'm uh, sorry, the weekly went from the 128.57 high to 128.52. It missed it by six cents, making leg C. Let me get rid of this uh, 120 minute chart for the moment. Made a peak G. Oh, don't cancel, 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 cancel. Uh, <laughs> didn't want to eliminate that because that has all my notations for the 120 minute charts of everything. So, what's really important is that I've been discussing the fact that if the bonds rally and the and the yields come down there's a good chance that we're looking at some kind of a rotation in this rotational market to say that money is coming out of equities and going into the fixed income as a, as a 
kind of a safety factor. Gold has also been part of that safety factor. I have gold as a possibly topping right here, a peak D in the uh, daily chart, a leg D in the, in the weekly chart, only a C in the uh, monthly. But look at this. You've got the dollar right here. This is this is pretty nice action for the first time in the dollar in the sense that the MACD has moved higher in a divergence between the price coming down from the 9180s uh, down to the 9162 low of the 29th of August. The stochastic has made a higher low, even though the price has come down. And the weekly candle has made this perfect, actually next week would be the perfect 35-week week rally from May the 6th at 91.62 of 2016 to 103.82, the high of the Jan week of January the 6th, down to the 91.62 low of this past week. So everything, all the criteria have been met. Doesn't mean that you automatically have a left side, right side price time, Chapman wave match, and therefore you're going to go rallying. It doesn't mean that. What it says is now we can look at the 91s as key support. You could go lower. But at this particular point, we're looking at the chances over the next few weeks of a decent rally in the dollar. Now, the probability, as I see it, has finally increased instead of seeing the nine period moving average as a repellent in the weekly chart with one miserable close back on the week of the 7th of April back at 101.26, almost 10 points higher. And then after that, not once could it close above. It, it hardly even touched the nine period moving average. I think this is the first time we can see that. And if you look at the GDX weekly chart, right at that 200 period moving average, it's been a barrier before. I don't see any reason why at this particular point there isn't some kind of a consolidation in gold. The MACD is extended. It's very good, but it's extended. On balance volume is extended. Stochastics at 87%, not really confirming the rally. So I'm not. I would not be um, say shorting right now. The gold, although we actually have a position in the dollar on the long side, I, I'd be looking at this and saying, okay, if it's a sideways consolidation, which we've seen in so many of the other indices, then perhaps the dollar has a chance to at least have a decent bounce. And if you look at the EUR USD, the euro dollar currency pair, look at this, a peak, probably a peak D. I'll only know later in the week. But the MACD didn't confirm the rally. The stochastics failed. It's a 64% GCSC in the weekly chart. Um, the almost hit the 200 period moving average in the monthly of a spectacular. This is still just a single leg A from the low that was made in January at 1.033. And now we are in the 1.18 area having hit 1.2. Oh, six. I mean, that's a spectacular move. So, yes, I think that there's going to be a sideways consolidation. And if you look at the USD JPY, look at it has complemented what we're seeing in the dollar. It's holding really well above the nine period moving average. The dollar, um, US dollar, Japanese yen currency pair. And I think that it's going to rally. And I think it would go to the 111.02. It's at 110.11 area, maybe by next week, as long as it holds 109 support. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians. Now, we're going to go through this in great detail because it's the beginning of the month. It's really the beginning of the season of the market as everyone comes back. I'll be right back straight off these messages. Dow's up 62, S&P's up 7. If you're looking to open your portfolio to a world of opportunity, consider the new market safe emerging currency CD from Everbank. This three year US dollar denominated CD gives you exposure to five equally weighted currencies from Brazil, China, India, Indonesia, and Turkey at a time when experts see great potential for global growth. Even better, it features a 7.0 leverage factor, which means you could earn a potential market upside payment of seven times the CD's performance at maturity with no cap if the currencies increase in value over the CD's term. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. The September 28th funding deadline will be here before you know it. So call 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. 
This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Hi, so a couple of comments and then and then we'll get to uh, uh, yeah, then we'll get to the markets. So this is really important. Now, this, this is really what I want you to discuss. Here we go. So there was a comment made that uh, yesterday I had said that within a few days I expected the Dow to start uh, moving down. Well, um, I haven't really changed that opinion just in terms of money management. I, I didn't want to be here if, if the MACD started to cross positive because that could give even a little bit more of a lift to the Dow. And then you get the U-shaped pattern with a potential double top in the 22,179 level, just pure trying for money management there. If you look at the diamonds, the diamonds, in fact, uh, do not have, oh, yesterday they were looking a little weaker than the Dow itself, even though they should track the same. And now the diamonds are just about to cross positive. So um, I've had that kind of mixed message. But what I'm really looking at is Within the context of this rotational market, and that's the whole thing, that was what my webinar was about, that's what, what all the analysis right now should be about, that if there is a rotation, look at the IBB, <coughs> I keep looking at it, we missed it, just missed buying it the other day, if you didn't want to jump in after it spiraled up, and it's gone from, I mean, it's 12% or something, 10% or 12% above, in the in, in in the particular instrument no sorry it shouldn't be let me see bib yeah we wanted it at 50 just under 55 didn't get it and now it's at 62. yeah that's a, it's a 12 percent uh, gain that we, we missed out there however what we're really looking at is that the smhs the semis ran up a lot sharper than i anticipated and now i can go back to my story now, this is, the, this is the day that I want you to do it because uh, for the long weekend, you'll have a chance to look at your different charts. The semiconductor index has basically led, the, be, because of the makeup of those semis and the importance and how LAM research and uh, applied materials and uh, advanced micro devices had really been acting so well. They essentially led the market up 
and that's the QQQ, I mean the NDX 100 part of the market, all the way up into the high in June, then the sharp pullback into the very first week of July, and then the rally into mid-July, and then it stalled, but the QQQ series went to an all-time high back there. Look, on the 28th of um, 28th of July went to 145.96. Well, it seemed to me that because the semis led the way up, they were going to indicate that the short to intermediate term would be putting a cap on the QQQ and the XLK. They all, all of be moving up together. XLK and the Qs went to all-time highs. The um, XLK went slightly higher on a percentage basis than the Qs, but this is the S&P Select Tech Spider Fund. You can understand why. But, and then we got the pullback. Now, if I, on the XLK, if I put this as an F, I really have to put it as an alternate count, F slash C, and this would be the top because the MACD and stochastic were pulling back. And now you've got a turnaround in the stochastic and the MACD, and the on-balance volume went to a low. And now it's rallying. And I think that I have to no choice but to think of this more as a C than an F, which says we could still have a week of slightly higher highs. And that's what I was trying to prepare for. It's the reason why I said, we'll tighten up the stop. I didn't want to have the Dow because it's got Intel. It's got, you know, it would be affected in some ways. But at the same time, this is really what I'm looking at. Within the context of the markets, if you look at monthly charts, now let's do this because this is the bigger picture that I want to show. In terms of the monthly charts, this doji candle in the monthly chart, if there is a break above, it has to be a full close for the month of September above 22,179. Can't pop up and then close back and then under the doji candle of where the close was yesterday, which was at uh, 21,894, I think it was. No. What will happen is if it closes above 22,179, we've ba basically done what happened over here with that doji candle from way back in November of last year. Was that November of last year? No, it couldn't have been. It must have been October. Oh, January, of course, January of this year. And... If it closes above, if the Dow closes above 22,179, I have to just look at it and say, you know what? Uh, despite what you're reading or hearing or anything, this market wants to go higher. I just have to be practical on that side. The MACD I've been saying for a long time is, is positive. Stochastic is positive. The on balance volume in the monthly chart is only in leg C, even though it's technically in leg E. But that is a positive. So now I look at the weekly chart, and this is where I say, oh, okay. The way I'm looking at it is I got a feeling that the, that there's a chance that the market will, the Dow will stall under or just above the 22,179 level, make a cup formation as the technicals remain somewhat weak in the weekly chart. And then we have a, another part of the digestive moment because we've been digesting for a month from the 8th of, of August until now, we haven't made new highs. We haven't made new highs, not we. The Dow hasn't made new highs. And the S&P hasn't made a new high, 2490.87. Trading it now at 2478, it is uh, still underneath that level, 12 points, 11 points. And it could do that next week. But I'm just looking at this and I'm saying, I'm not sure at this particular point if a breakout, because if the Dow goes to 22,000, 350 at any point in the next week and a half, I just have to say, nope, that's not the kind of uh, um, chart pattern that I would be looking at in the weekly chart. That's a, that's a positive pattern. That's not a double top. That is a breakout to the upside. So those are the levels I'm looking at, and I've made it clear. 21,600 is the support in the Dow at any point in the next few weeks. If it takes that out, we go down deeper and longer. So that's just, I wanted to do this to show you why I'm thinking and what I'm thinking. And anyway, it's ironic because right now, uh, even though I've got this one foot on the break and I'm kind of looking to short, we have long positions and some of them are doing really well. So um, only long positions. We now have no shorts. Uh, we have alternative. In other words, we've got a commodity uh, index long, um, but uh, not... Uh, 
not anything that's purely a short on the market. So now what we're looking at is the S&P, this is a gray leg B. If it pops above 2491.50, I have to put F slash B or C, whatever it is at that particular point. And because of the MACD crossing positive and the stochastic still acting well, on balance acting well, I just have to say, let it play out. I'm not, I, I, I don't want to get in the way of the market. Um, and that's how I'm looking at it. So that's the S&P. If you look at the Qs already starting uh, in the monthly chart, it's already in leg C, extension. Even though it's only up above the 145.96 by less than a point, in fact, 20 cents or so, it made a new recovery high, a new all-time high in September. Today's September. The Oops, I've got to send a cousin of mine. Happy birthday. Um, yeah, so there it is. So this is leg D. I'm calling it D for now in the weekly chart. I might have to change that, but leg D. Leg C, there's no question about it in the monthly. I'll be back, Basil Chapman does up some Platinum, ways. grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan its most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. We're back. So um, a couple of questions have come up. I just let me do this right now because it's part of the process of looking at the different indices. Um, the question was natural gas, NG, Trading at 3.086, strong leg B in the daily, strong leg B in the monthly, but it's a lousy chart, but it happens to be a strong, nice crossover in the MACD. Stochastic's working nicely. That monthly chart really has me a little worried there. 
what is that? That's F, G slash C, and that went to a D. Okay, so G slash C, and now it's gone to a D, which says this is the rally we've got to be really cognizant of in terms of upside potential because you've got, you've met many of the criteria that I just like to look for, A, B, C, D, D in the weekly, D in the monthly, and you've got a nice takeoff in the um, daily chart. So what was the question? The question was from Greg Basil. Unable to call today, sorry. Do you show divergence in daily wave count on natural gas contract versus UNG, I mean UGAS, UGAS, as of, rep as of report Thursday, looking at 698 on UNG. Let's now go to UNG. UNG. This is leg C. Oh, look at that. I have to put, the, uh, put my C. This is called the floating letter. That C goes to the next bar because there's a higher bar. If it was a lower, it would be a peak C. This is still leg C. Monthly chart, is, a weekly chart is B. And the monthly chart has a divergence because it did not make a lower low. United States Natural Gas Fund trading at 6.84. So I'd be looking at this and the left side high that I'm looking at is 6.95, correct. You got 6.98, I got 6.95. That would be, uh, for me, my first level. You're looking at the next one, which is 6.98. So the first one is from... The week of 21st of July, you're looking at June June the 30th at 698. Yes, that's the area. A close above that says the next level of focal point for me would be the high of 717, the week of the 2nd of June when it gapped down sharply after closing at 7, made a low of 730, closed at 744, bam. Next day, uh, whatever it was, the next week chart is at 717. So that's how you go step by step. Two things. When I'm looking at this uh, natural gas, I'm thinking seasonal. I'm looking at the structure of the H pattern in the monthly chart that in the one case was a successful H pattern. In the actual contract itself, which is really the, the root it went to a lower low. It actually went to a lower, lower number of times. So this is saying that the MACD being very good and the stochastic now starting to turn up. <laughs> this is the first day of the month. <laughs> We've got an entire month to go. But once it starts, if there is a turnaround in the technicals from here, that will confirm that there is now finally a buy mode in the daily. If you can, and this is now an NG we're looking at. So let me just do the N UNG because that most people can might not get the futures or the continuous contract. They do get UNG, which is the United States Natural Gas Fund. That would say that if there is a spike into the sevens in UNG. All of a sudden, you've got the daily in a buy mode. It's already in a buy mode, but a confirmed buy mode. You've got the weekly in a buy signal with the potential to get to a buy mode, but it's at least a potential. Instead of failing, it looks like it's successful. And then the monthly chart will take a longer time. But if it can get into the 8.30 sometime late September, early October, you've got the same pattern we've seen in so many of the, this arch formation in the monthly charts and the commodities where it says, I can rally, and I might rally sharper than one would expect. So just one step at a time. A crack in the UNG below 630, it's so trading at 683 right now, would negate all the strength. So that's the way I would look at Congratulations. Good entry point. Just keep holding it, keep watching it. Let's see what happens over the uh, uh, over time. So um, let me go back to uh, Kevin saying, Dow should drop over the next few days. Your direct quote on radio yesterday. Um, I... I'm not changing that opinion at this particular point. I'm just giving you a heads up, Kevin, that I'm looking at this. I'm not the Dow. I only try to analyze the Dow. And I'm just saying to you, look, there's a trend line that it broke yesterday. I didn't expect that it would it would break the trend line and then have another uh, quite sharp day on the upside, which is doing right now. So I have to be very uh, careful. When I'm talking about this, I'm saying there's a Chapman wave falling axe formation. It's now above the resistance line. I have to respect that. My opinion still says that I'm anticipating a sudden pullback. 
Uh, but because there's a rotational aspect to it, the strength of money going to the biotechs and the strength of money going to the semiconductors, that gives support to the market so that there doesn't have to be anything close to a crash. It, it says as long as there's a rotation into some sectors where fund managers can put their money, it gives you some support. That's what I'm saying. So I'm going to make it real clear. Uh, 22,020, a close above that today says, uh-oh, watch out, because I'd said 22,050s, once you go above that, that cup formation is really strong to retest 22,179, the high. Now, GLD question here, GLD, new leg B, now I'm calling it um, D right now. This is D in the, oh, uh, here we go, D in the daily of GLD, this is gold, the S&P gold uh, trust. This is, oh, is it a leg B in the weekly? <sighs> I'm going to keep it as a B for now. Let me just double check because gold is really my, my, I got to go to the root. I can't just suddenly plus. Now we're going to go here. Yeah, let me look at the gold. GC, uh, we, yes. So this is going to be tough. This could be a brand new D slash B. And I won't know. I want to wait until the, the close today. And then I really need just one day of next week to start giving me a sense of whether I'm right or wrong. And let me let me sum it up this way. Peak in the dance at GLD, uh, new leg B. The answer to that is that the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, is still very strong. And the stochastic has only now, this past week, really gone into the 80s very comfortably. It's at 85. So what I am anticipating is if there is a stronger rally in the dollar, and I'll include crude oil because uh, crude oil is so so way off the um, the highs that it made recently that it's due for a bounce. But that that would say if crude oil bounces, do you think that the dollar will rally? I don't know. They're actually kind of independent in a certain way. So. Uh, crude oil at 47.12. I think it's still stuck, chop, chop, chop in a trading band. So let me go back to um, let me go back to the GLD. So the GLD, as I as it stands right now, um, I do have to put it in as probably a, a, a B. But I'm going to just do it in in an alternate account for only one reason. Um, here we are. I'm seeing strength in the dollar that might impact. Gold, and I'm seeing gold as being a little. Hmm, I wouldn't say overbought in the weekly chart, but I would say in the daily chart. What I'm looking at is if I go to the gold contract. Look, gold. The MACD has bounced off the nine-period moving average. Oh, sorry, on the slow-moving average, three times or well, let's call it twice to be conservative. I always think that the third time is where it crosses negative, and I'm just anticipating that under 80% in the stochastic says that the gold could in fact have a chop, 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 lower highs and lower lows, but in a, in a moderate move to the day. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will 
will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of tfnn.com under trading newsletters. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE -E or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. So this is what I wanted to mention. And one of the reasons why I'm saying that I'm trying to go step by step, I'm trying to organize my thoughts around what's working and what's not working, but why the things that are working are working. Are they just reflex actions like IBB and semiconductor? Well, maybe let's skip the semis in the moment, but the IBB, which has been, it was decimated from the 400 level down to the 220 level, then it all of a sudden it bounces back. Um, are we looking at this as a real uh, sustained rally in the, in the biotechs? Because that makes a big, big difference. But hey, wait a minute. When I'm looking at the market, another reason why, or another reason why I want you to be uh, fairly light on the short side for the Dow and then have the stop in place, is because if I'm looking at Ford having a very nice rally off the low of ten dollars and forty-seven cents from the 18th of August to today's high of 11.43, I would call that a pretty good 1.10% uh, a rally in single leg A up. And if I'm looking at General Motors, and we have General Motors in the portfolio, um, back from the 35 area, 34 area, and it's trading at 37.60, um, and it's acting extremely well, I mean, how bearish can I be? I can't... I, I can't say um, these are the areas that are working uh, and they're not economically related. It's absolutely General Motors and Ford. And of course, you can say FCAU, which is Ford Chrysler, but that really has something else. It has a component that is very different. There's some kind, something about a Chinese company wanting to take over uh, this uh, Ford Chrysler, I'm sorry, Chrysler Fiat, uh, or Fiat Chrysler Auto Company. Um, and look at the spectacular move it's had. So something, something in this picture says to me, wait a minute, you can't as yet become extremely bearish. You can have short-term uh, trades and you can also be thinking of the uh, aspect that because the jobs have been improving, but it's not the jobs that have been improving, it's more the better quality, the better paying jobs, the more enduring jobs, these are not shorter term jobs, are um, expanding and that's what it feels like in the economy. That's why people have the comfortability to say we want to buy these big things like houses and cars. And if you're looking at um, RACE, one of my symbols that I use for, uh, where did it go? RACE, I put it into the den by mistake, typed it in. Look, it's at an alternate count, G slash C. I have to consider this is probably a G, um, and it's giving, not giving up a cent. It's at 116.71. Race turns out to be what? Ferrari, sports and racing cars. And I don't know about you, but when I drive around, I'm always looking at cars. Just, I, I love looking at design and stuff. Done it since I was four years old. And um, I am seeing 
more and more women driving Ferraris, Bentleys, and Aston Martins and the very fancy cars. And I, th I would say to you that that is telling a story. It's telling me a story. And that story is that we're in an era of showing what you've got, demonstrating it, and uh, making sure that it is you're out to get the best and you want to show it. And that's what we're looking at. And that is part of this coda period. Um, Peek says, Basil, can you get the phone numbers? No, I cannot. But at the same time, what I am looking at is it's a phenomenon that I tracked for a long, long time. And I do remember seeing a, just, just a little bit in 2000. And I saw because of the real estate boom, I did see the real estate agents that showed up around here, wherever I saw them stopping to check out uh, um, to, to for the listings, you know, they always have that open house where real estate agents can come and then you get cars down up and down the street as everyone comes in to check the, the new listing. Um, I'm seeing something very different than I've seen ever before. I'm seeing um, the kind of cars for the real estate agents that on it used to be where it changed where they wanted that slightly bigger car because you're going to take a family and show them around now it is really fancy stuff that i'm looking at the very big wagons the porsche wagons and things like that i i, I don't know how to explain it it's just things that i observe and it's part of what i look at as market socioeconomic political and ego part of the market that is really important let's go to mike at Ormond beach mike how are you that's one doing great, and I couldn't agree with you more about uh, being in the coder phase. Um, I, I'm in the central Florida area, and um, recently I was at a park near a lake, and yep. these two people that lived in the area, one showed up with a McLaren, and the oh. other one had a Lamborghini. And I'm seeing yeah, you... more and more of these supercars around um, than I ever had so I, right. I do and, agree with you. I think and we're you in see, that phase now. And the but, point I, is that it is not a Porsche and it is not a BMW. It's not a Mercedes. It is the esoteric names, and that's the real issue. Do these people worry about a service station nearby? No, they don't care. This is what they want, and then they deserve it. They want to buy this. I have no problem with the buying of it. I'm doing the observation. That's all I'm doing. And I agree that when you're looking at the stuff, um, these are names that you just you didn't commonly see. In fact, you'd have to wait months before you saw a Lamborghini. Now, I mean, I could. Uh, I saw one yesterday. So this is the way it is. And um, I, I, it, it's not just where you are because it's all over the show. I mean, I, I noticed these things in. Uh, small towns, big towns, cities, doesn't matter. That's that's what's happening. So you are looking at GE and you got in and that looks beautiful right now, up 20, yeah. uh, 25, 16, up 61 cents. So now the okay. question is, um, in terms of your buying it and seeing it right now at 25, 16, what is your impression? Well, I'm looking at the technicals on a daily chart, and on my chart, I see a big distance between the two moving averages of the stochastic, and I see the other day that the McD crossed positive, and I also see the same with the McD, and I also see the relative strength is, is up on my chart, like around 50. So I think it's got a chance to probably go higher. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but we're, uh, on a daily, we're in leg A. Gray A, yes. Gray meaning is below the previous. It says nothing to do with it being a negative or positive. It's just an explanation that it is way below the previous major peaks. And therefore, it's what we call a retracement mode. I usually like the full term, which I call initially a retracement failure mode, meaning it could fail at any point because it's still way under the previous highs. But that's mm -hmm. not a derogatory term. It's just an explanation to, to in one capsule to say, yes, it's a great rally, but it's really the first. It's the start of a rally. But the reason why I asked you this is when we spoke uh, yesterday or the day before, um, did you expect from 2465 to so quickly 
go right into that ugly candle from the 17th of August, opens at 25.10 and plunges down to 24.72. You didn't expect this big candle, although you'd like to see it. And that's really the issue, the speed with which the turnaround is occurring. Hey, can you hold on? I want you to look yes. at the weekly chart. Okay, we'll yeah. be back. We've got Mike at Ormond Beach. We're looking at GE, Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. And on the 1st of September, the Dow's up 84 right now. s and up 7 and 3 quarters. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of The Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Okay, so we're on with Mike. We're looking at GE. Fabulous move. I really, I, I tossed and turned and I couldn't. Uh, I was deciding whether to put it on as a buy this morning because I really like the action. And then I thought, well, let's just see what GE does. Because if GE has a very good move between now and Tuesday when the market reopens, there's a chance that it's telling me that I must not rule out that the Dow can actually go to a new high. But I have seen GE come down when the market's gone up, and I've seen GE go up when the market's come down. So I'm treating it more as that intraday, uh, 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 very short-term uh, look that I have and use it as a, as a Dow tool. So I'm just going to say to you, this is the weekly candle because of what now is a silent Chapman Wave, silent doji from last week. Having a strong move like this suggests there's a real good chance that next week GE is going to touch for the first time the nine period exponential moving average that'll be at 25.59. It hasn't done that since it broke down uh, the week of the 23rd of June. And in fact, it's only closed once above the nine period moving average since it was there back in 
the week of the 13th of January. I have to consider this is a very positive move. It makes me just a little cautious to see a single leg A up. If there is any pullback, what you really want to see now is some support at 24 to 2518. Between 2490 and 2482, I would say that that's probably where you want to see support if there's any weakness at all. But I, I think you got in beautifully because the risk reward said, hey, it's going to be probably a little bit more time than price in GE just at this particular point if it pulled back from your entry point. Now it says great because the upside has shown its intent and it says the 9 period moving average of 2466 could be a very strong liftoff because the daily chart, this is, a, this is a, uh, really the first time that it's lifted off so sharply over the 9 period moving average for months. So I, I think you, you're in a very good position. But most importantly, the MACD in the weekly chart is improving and the stochastic yeah. is improving. Hey, congratulations. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Basil. Thank you very much for calling. Folks, have a wonderful weekend. Basil Chapman signing off my newsletter, the opening call. I'll be going, giving, sending out charts from tomorrow for the weekend, for Tuesday's uh, 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 opening, uh, and we'll see what happens. But so far, we'll see. I still think that we're getting close to some kind of a digestive phase again. Tom O'Brien has just announced that he'll be coming to Boston September 30th for a free workshop, The Art of Timing the Trade. Join Tom O'Brien Saturday morning, September 30th at the Boston Marriott in Burlington, Massachusetts as he breaks down his trading methodology and provides you with the tools to become a more successful and profitable trader. Everyone that attends in person will receive a free signed copy of Tom's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. Daryl Martin from Apex Investing Institute will also be presenting for 90 minutes at this free event. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. Join me in Boston on September 30th as I return to my hometown for a workshop about the art of timing the trade. I look forward to seeing all the tigers and tigresses for the special free event. All action starts early at 7.30 a.m. with a continental breakfast and wraps up at about 1 p.m. Topics that Tom will be covering during his presentation include quality volume, cause and effect, ABC structures, swing points, and much, much more. For all the information on this free Boston event taking place Saturday, September 30th, visit the front page of TFNN.com.